Hi there, Ashley L. Jones here, author of Modern Cast Iron. As you know by now, I'm working on a follow-up book called Skillet Heads, and this one is all about the collecting and restoration of cast iron. And so when we talk about collecting, we also need to talk about those modern companies that are out there, not just those vintage companies. And we have some awesome modern cast iron manufacturers out there. And today I am interviewing Liz Saru of Burrow Furnace. And this is a really neat company. And I'm so excited to be able to talk to you about this, Liz. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Ashley, for having me. This is great. And so we not only get to see Liz, but we get to see part of your workshop. You, you call it your workshop, <laughs> not your foundry, right? Mm -hmm. So this is part of your workshop behind you. This is so cool. I like to get the, the little inside view. You said you've got some work actually happening in an area pretty close to you, right? Yeah, this room is just kind of a flex room. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, in the next, the next room over across the little breezeway there is where all the manufacturing is happening, but it's too loud to... Uh, to go over there <laughs> yeah hence the headphones yeah <laughs> that's awesome okay so um your company is called burrow furnace so mm -hmm. you guys are in the new york finger lakes area so you are not a southern company by any stretch of the imagination you guys are way up north in new york and this is where we've had a lot of foundries before up north but how did how did you guys start this journey for yourself? I mean, because it's you and your husband, John Truex, mm -hmm. that are in this together. So you don't just do admin, like, because you are the first female that I have interviewed. And I think this is awesome <laughs> because you are not just part of the business. You are in it just as much as John is, according to the videos I've seen. So <laughs> tell me how it came about and what your role is. What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so... John and I run the company together. Um, when we met in 2009, it was just before Bor Furnace started up, um, but he was already thinking about it and sort of designing um, the first skillets that we released. Um, he has a design background. And at the time he had been um, designing work for global brands like Calvin Klein perfume bottles and like a Grey Goose bottle, that kind of thing but it was um, the case that he would do the design and then send it off and then just have no hand in it after that, like no control over what happened. Um, and he was really thinking about with his background, what he could do where um, he could design the whole process. Um, so he did study uh, metal casting in undergrad and then has a product design degree. Um, wow. So I came on a little bit later um, after he had done the designs and took them with his cousin um, to the New York gift fair, which is like a big wholesale mm -hmm. fair to sort of gauge whether or not this was something that had legs, um, they started getting the foundry set up. So Jason moved back down to Tennessee, which is where John is from, and I stepped in to sort of get involved as we were building the first foundry um, before we started casting. Um, but I have a background in studio arts and film production. Um, and I had strayed from the path and had been doing like some corporate work at the time. So it was really fun for me to get my hands dirty again and start getting in the mix. And it's just sort of taken off. Wow. So you both kind of approached it from an art standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, why cast iron, though? I mean, for him, he did design, but did he grow up in a family of cast iron? And so this was just something that he yearned to do or was it kind of a late? Um, thing in life that he encountered or how did that come about? Um, so he had studied iron casting in school so he had a background in it mm -hmm. and then thinking about a project that would be good to do um, the cast iron skillet at the time there were when we started this there were no other um, independent right. or modern cast iron companies so the only thing out there was the vintage skillets and then you know the log skillet, mm -hmm. which is like a similar form. It's mm -hmm. like the American classic shape. Um, and so there were a lot of opportunities there to give, put a modern spin on cast iron, make some design changes that improve its performance, but then also um, design a production process um, that the, our, our production process that we started with was like a no waste process. 
So designing the process of making the skillet was like part of the whole conception of the beginning of the company. Um, so using all recycled metal, we used to use a uh, restaurant fryer grease to run I the saw furnace. that. I <laughs> um, saw that in your video. So you don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. Right when we had started doing it, was just around the time that um, waste flexible oil became a commodity. So it was very competitive um, <laughs> to, to get the oil. Like yeah. these, big, these big biofuel companies were setting up contracts with all of the restaurants. So you'd have to like find a restaurant that didn't have a contract or wow. we were in Syracuse at the time and like the local fire stations would do fish fries on Friday. And so like the firemen would save the grease for us, which was awesome, but you know, it's not, not really a scalable proposition. <laughs> I, I didn't um, wonder about that. In the video that I'm that you and I are referencing is the one where it was Anthony Bourdain who came to your workshop. And it's just a really great video, folks. You, you can go to burrowfurnace.com and I'll put a link at the bottom of there because it's, it's just a neat video to to have him there. And it was just it, it seemed like it quite like an intimate um gathering because you've got a smaller workshop you're not this huge foundry and um it sounds like things were a little bit smaller back then you mm -hmm. know because you were using the vegetable oil and everything was just right there and it was um it's just a neat video a real good insight into how things can look behind the scenes but it sounds like you guys are gearing up a little bit more than what you had then mm -hmm. yeah the um you know, we've been growing steadily. Um, I guess we officially uh, incorporated in 2011. So, mm -hmm. sort of 2009 was when we did the design work or John did the design work. And then we incorporated in 2011. All of our equipment at that time was, um, we, we had made it. Um, so, you know, we were starting just to scrappy young people. That's amazing. Um, and so, you know, we didn't have, first of all, we didn't have financial backing. So, yeah. um, and foundry equipment is way out of scale um, from, yeah. from our operation, especially at that time. Um, so we built all the um, basic components and built our own little micro foundry. Um, and yet that's the one in the Anthony Bourdain video. But since then, um, we still have some homemade stuff or shop made stuff, make it sound a little bit uh, fancier. Right. But um, we get a lot of our equipment from like prototyping foundries that are oh. that are scaled all the way down. So, you know, at auction and things like that when places close or move or scale up. So a, a um, lot of the modern manufacturers are leasing time and space from big foundries. Mm -hmm. And, and very few are really trying to do their own little foundry at home, you know, so they already say, okay, well, I'll, I'll rent from these guys. So they already have that capacity for scale. Um, but I think it's great that you guys are keeping it so in-house. I was reading on your website how that just really enables you to modify as you go along. So, it, mm -hmm. you, you know, you make a pan today and you, well, I like it a little bit different. So tomorrow it might be a little different. I, I just think that's it's really smart that you guys have so much control over the design, but then also the manufacturer as well. Yeah, I think um, our scale does allow us to be more nimble. And like you were saying, we do do all of our own prototyping in-house. So the products that we have for sale are things that, you know, we've evolved over time, even before they're issued for sale, we'll probably have made five or six different versions that we've cooked with and and tweaked and changed until um, it was the best version of what it was. So um, to my knowledge, I, I believe we're the only, um, the only uh, cast iron skillet company beyond Log Shoes who makes the product um, themselves. I think everyone else um, partners with foundries to, to do the pouring because that's the barrier to entry there is just so high, I mean, um you don't need to you don't need to start a foundry to have a skillet made <laughs> right i think some of, i think there might be some other smaller ones that do some of their own you may form, be right but it I is haven't very been few. It, enough. it yeah. is very few because in that that's what always gets me is how do you go from you know a day job to waking up and saying i think i want to pour 2500 degree <laughs> molten <Yeah>. iron <laughs> 
I mean, just the safety part of it and where is it going to go and who's going to insure it? Like, so there's just so many yeah. cool barriers to it. Um, it. It just fascinates me that people just keep going through that. I mean, it's meant to be if you can get through it all and you guys have. And that video that I saw of you guys, y- you and um, you and John were dressed in like all silver, <laughs> like wild outfits which is necessary for the safety of it but you you guys were head to toe and you were both pouring and and doing all of the necessary tasks involved in hand making cast iron so as you've been scaling over the years are are you two still personally involved in those tasks or have you know have you brought in employees to do that kind of work or where where are you in all of that Mm -hmm. um we are both involved in making everything we do have one um wonderful employee who's helping us now and we hope she never leaves (laughs) um but we are um plugging along and right now for a while, we've been working on our enameling line. So yeah. we have originally, um, and still, we make the bare season cast iron. Mm-hmm. But um, we started a project oof, maybe five years ago now where we wanted to make a Dutch oven and we wanted to make an enameled version. Um, and there was still one company in the US that was um, taking jobs to do enameled cast iron. A lot of folks do cast, uh, enameled steel, but yeah, the cast iron process is slightly iron. different. Yeah, I just or, learned that. Um, yeah, or like someone like Kohler will enamel their own cast iron tubs. But there was one company that was, um, you know, you could hire to work with you um, on a product. And while we were um, doing our first run, they went out of business because uh-huh. um, so many, um, just from a cost perspective, it's it's much less expensive to have this work done overseas. Yeah. Um, and so for John and I, given that like we're so in the mix on everything and really interested in process and the craft behind everything, we didn't want to go with an overseas company also because it's difficult, um, you know, to be mm-hmm. traveling halfway around the world all the time to, to work on development for people who are like so um, into having their fingers in the pot, I guess. Right, right. Um, so we started um, doing it ourselves and have been, that's been a, a process over the last couple of years to like really fine tune it um, and get it where we want it. And so we're working on uh, expanding our capability there um, as like our next development step. Well, you guys have made huge strides here because you are the only cast iron manufacturer who does enamelware in the US. I mean, much less the fact that you're making it yourself i mean the fact that it's just enameled in the u.s you guys are the only ones it's the only dutch oven Mm -hmm. that's that's amazing everyone else is lamenting that they can't do it you guys with you know you and john plus one have managed to do it it's a it's a smaller scale but Mm -hmm. i i think it's amazing so i want to talk about what all this looks like do you have do you Um, feel it in front of you yeah okay Uh, i have a do you say a skillet Yes, or Dutch oven. We'll start with- I have both over here. (laughs) You bet. So this is our frying skillet. Um, This was our first, we have a, this is a 10 and a half inch skillet. Um, Our very first product was a nine inch version of the same. Um, And so this was sort of the starting point um, of the company thinking about what we could do differently, what we could keep that's great about um, a classic skillet and where we could maybe improve upon it. Um, so something that we do is we're not, people, as you know, who love cast iron fall into two camps where they like really love the thin walled, super smooth vintage cast mm-hmm. iron, or they love like the beefy modern cast mm-hmm. iron that can like, really hold heat and give like a great mm-hmm. sear and like lean into what cast iron is good at. Um, our skillet is sort of a mix of the two okay. where it is, um, it's heavy bottomed. So you're still getting the great heat retention and like searing properties of a modern cast iron. But um, we, do, we do smooth them by hand. Um, so they're smooth, but not slick. Like there's 
-huh. I always say they're soft to the touch. Okay. Um, we specifically put a finish on it that helps it grab the seasoning uh -huh. um, to make it more conducive to home seasoning without having necessarily to be like a cast iron expert to build up a really good um, seasoning. Sometimes that super slick finish can be hard to build up on. Yes. Um, so we leave like a little micro texture on it. That's so funny because um, um, the stargazer said the same thing, the exact same thing. And I, I like your term soft, uh, but he said micro texture that they found that that slick just does not hold a seasoning well. And that just a little bit of texture is mm -hmm. all it takes. So that's that's great that I'm hearing it again from another manufacturer. I think that seals the deal that that's the defining answer <laughs> on that argument. Yeah. Yeah. And so other than um, the finish and the weight, um, it's balanced mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, the classic skillet has the stubby little handle and then the heavy pan. So this has a more balanced weight distribution. We have the big helper handle um, so that you can use two hands to hold it and move it around. And then um, I think the biggest visual thing is this um, forked handled connection um, allows you to hold the skillet with a bare hand on the cooktop. Um, the heat dissipates through the fork connection and then it has like a celery shape on the underside. Oh. Um, so the handle stays cool while you're cooking with it. Um, so I think that's amazing. Can we see the bottom? Yeah. Okay. So it says um, burrow furnace on the yeah, bottom furnace. and there's no heat ring on it. No, there is no heat ring. No heat ring. So what, what caught my eye when I first saw your, your catalog is how modern everything looks. It's just so sleek. There, there's no extras. It's just sleek. And I, I mean, there's just minimalist would be probably a good term for it. And uh, it, it just really sets your catalog apart from the other skillets. I mean, it's, it's kind of night and day. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, um, you know, we just approach this from a different place. Um, there are, if you want like the classic skillet look, you, you can get that. So we wanted right. to try to do um, something that made our pieces um, unique to us. Mm -hmm. Very much. And then also that nice um, loop handle, you can grasp with, uh, you know, uh, a, a hot handle holder on, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do that with so many of the other ones are like the really small tabs. It's just, it's yeah, just you have really to like hard. get in there. <laughs> yeah. It's just really hard to, and I need both hands with a lot of these. And so mm -hmm. I like that you have, you know, plenty of room to, to grab this handle and under this handle and, and hoist the pan around. Um, in terms of stats, um, your 10 inch skillet um, runs six pounds and um is it three hundred dollars that's what mm -hmm. i saw on your website so i mean we're talking you know really kind of the top of the line handmade by the founders <laughs> by the owners kind of cast iron it's a different type of product um than a lot of the other products that are out there there's just different i don't know there's so many differences and something we've been working on um are ways where we can bring our price point down. So as we make new products, um, you know, we don't want to ever sacrifice the quality or what we're doing, but we are um, finding ways to make, reduce our costs, still put out the same quality item and um, bring the price down. Um, the Dutch oven is our yeah. newest product. Can we see that one? And um, it if is you can hoist, half, hoist that yeah. big boy <laughs> yeah. up. It's pretty wow. beefy. It has the same thick wall, so it's it's quite heavy. Um, but that lid. But these are. Um, but, yeah. I mean, you just set that thing aside, but that is such a selling point. That lid, because you, again, you can put your hand under the 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 actual handle, and mm -hmm. sometimes those are heavy or they get kind of stuck. You know that right when you're cooking, and I have never seen a handle like that before. And I, I thought that was very, very unique to you guys. Yeah, so the handle is, what makes it unique is that it's cast all in one piece. Mm -hmm. So um, typically you'll have like a little knob um, that serves as the, the lift point for the handle. Um, but sometimes those have maximum temperature thresholds yes. that they can withstand in the oven so that 
limits the use of your product. And then also um, it's just a fail point for the enamel since it's screwed in, like the mm -hmm. screw can sort of chip away at the enamel and it can rust and you know create cracks. So we cast it all in one piece um, so that there's no, there are no longevity issues around right. the pot. That's awesome. Um, but we, I, I guess I was saying that um, these are priced at 280, which it undercuts the European mass manufacturers, um, which is something we're super proud of since, you know, we're such a small team. Um, so that's, that's top of mind for all that of our new wonderful. issues. That is wonderful. And, and that's the enameled one that we were just looking at. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we also make it in seasoned. I don't have one here, but. Um, yeah, but it's, it's interesting that it's black. Now, it, is it easier for you? Did you choose black because it's easier to do that with the like the FDA restrictions on color? Because I, I know enamel, it, it's difficult to get that really bright color because you have to add the chemicals and the metals to get the mm -hmm. color. So is that why you went with black because it was easier? Or is that just where you wanted to start because it was in line with the, the seasoned cast iron? So um, we went with the black. I love the way it looks, but also you're on, you're correct in that a lot of the really bright colors are made with um, chemicals and additives that are can be health mm -hmm. harmful and harmful to the environment. Like you know when you see like a fire engine red color, it's made with cadmium, mm -hmm. and then you deal with cadmium exposure, cadmium wastewater stuff right. you just don't want to think about. So we're always thinking about safety from a consumer standpoint, but also from a worker standpoint and an environmental standpoint. Um, and so we work with a US um, company that formulates the enamel for us. Um, and the black is um, lead free, cadmium free, free of, free of all the nasty stuff you don't want in your cookware. Um, and they're, you know, we're, this is our first um, and we're working with them to develop some other colors, but you're you're never going to see like the fire engine red come out of our workshop yeah. Yeah. Um, for that reason. And you know, the reason why most of us choose cast iron is because it's a helpful cookware. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it it leaches iron that you need. It it doesn't leach anything else. And so when you start talking about enamelware, the question is, well, how helpful is that cookware? And it it, it there there's a lot of debate on it. I I have done some research on it and everything I've seen shows that it is very safe given the current restrictions and given the fact that you're not cooking on the outside. <laughs> yeah. I'm not think cooking on the red, but you don't want to make the red. You don't right. be around it. So that makes I think sense. You're exactly right. Anything you, you can buy is going to be um, consumer healthy, but then you're, you're dealing with the other questions. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that you guys are environmentally conscious um, of that sort of thing. And I think if people are more aware of what goes into their cookware and then, you know, what does leach out of it or, or what is, is involved in it, I think making that switch to something that's more helpful is, is just natural. Um, so I, I think that's great that you started off with, with a black one and um, we don't have to worry about what's on the outside or the inside. <laughs> that's wonderful. Okay, uh, let's see here. What, I, I did wanna ask you, when it comes to your, your skillets, you did say that they're smooth. Mm -hmm. you, it, you, have, you have that little bit of a texture. So you're not using CNC machines, right? You said it was more of a hand, a hand polishing process. Mm -hmm. um, so that's quite, that's quite different than the big CNC machines that a lot of the, the big, manufacturers use. So that's a neat difference there. Um, okay, how long uh, does it take to do a plain skillet? From this is always end? a little bit of a tricky question to answer because we never do everything uh -huh. at once. Everything sort of moves through the shop in batches. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a pretty petite furnace and we, um, if we're doing one pour, that's between 12 and 15 skillets, depending on what we're doing that day. Um, and so from, so the pour we usually do in the evening at the end of the day, and then those cool overnight. Um, and then the next day you're taking them out of the molds, 
cleaning um, just like the residual sand mm -hmm. from the molds off. Um, you have to cut the gate off and then it goes into the hand finishing process. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to condense everything all together, um, I guess typically, so we run through all the batches in the course of three days. Um, but every so, skillet gets a couple of hours, at least of individual attention yeah. um, through the process. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. a very succinct answer. No, no, that's good. I mean, it, <laughs> over a course of, of, of three days, really. Um, and, and you guys aren't having to go from facility to facility because some of our, you know, modern manufacturers, because they're leasing space in different locations, they're shipping from state to state. Mm -hmm. And you guys aren't having to do that. Um, okay, so where are your products available? I know they're they're available at Burrow Furnace, but it looks like right now they're out of stock. Or are you mm -hmm. you're restocking right now? We are restocking. We had um, done pre hours pre orders during our COVID slowdown, um, and like everyone else, have just been locked in this supply mm -hmm. chain madness. So we are um, currently completing fulfillment on pre-existing commitments, and then we are gonna be stocked. So we're not doing pre-orders anymore. Um, and I think that we should have stock right before the holiday. So when everyone else is sold out, <laughs> we'll have some stuff up there, um, but then continuing, you know, continuing onward, you won't see um, that our website is sold out because we'll be building inventory. Awesome, okay, good. So I can tell people to check out Burrow Furnace. Okay, for Christmas. Um, what you 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 actually have quite a, a catalog in terms of what is available you've got the skillets you have different different sizes you have one without a long handle you have smaller pieces where do you think you guys are headed next i know you talked about maybe more of the enamel wear is that kind of where your focus is going to be besides just restocking everything yeah um we are we have a, a lot of projects that have been on the back burner. Um, and so our main focus is gonna be expanding our enameling um, offerings. Our bakeware collection that's sold out on the website now, we're tweaking those designs to make them um, enameling compatible. Since we did the design oh, nice. before we had the ability to enamel anything, um, we think that those products would be better as enameled products. And so we're gonna be doing that. Um, we've got a few more Dutch oven sizes coming out and hopefully some new colors. Are you gonna keep the bakeware as seasoned as well and add the enamel mm -hmm. wear? Okay, good. Yeah. 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 The bakeware um, is fantastic. That's oh, a lot you. of companies don't have that. Yeah, we, um, I really like them a lot. We use them a lot at home um, and without the, they have a flared rim to hold them up um, without the big handle, but they're much larger pieces um, without adding the handles. You get a lot more cook yeah. surface. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they're pretty versatile because you can use them. You can just use it like a skillet. Um, right, they're, they're right. Huge. You have one that's like a <laughs> lasagna pan. Oh uh -huh. man, that'd be, that'd be great. For people who really want to transition everything to cast iron, you really mm -hmm. need some bakeware pieces. And uh, that's great that you have those. Well. I, I just think Burrow Furnace is a really neat company. I, I want people to check you out. We'll have links at the bottom here. Um, and now that you're restocking, it's, it's a good time. Uh, so just everybody check out burrowfurnace.com and uh, get your Christmas in early, All right? All right, well, thank you so much, Liz. I appreciate you being here and, uh, and for your contribution to Skillet Heads. Oh, thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you.